I looked on one of the Facebook pages and somebody asked the question, what's a tritone substitution? It was one of the music theory pages. And I thought, okay, I'll answer this one. It is actually a reasonably straightforward concept, but there are a few little music theory tidbits to go through first. Let's have a look. Songs are in certain keys. Let's take C major, for example. We've got a chord of C. Now, in this key of C major, you have other chords that sort of fit with that major scale. The C major scale is all the natural notes. So all of the chords that are main chords in C major use these notes. So we've got the tonic chord of C, C major, the supertonic chord or chord two of D minor, the mediant chord or chord three, which is E minor, subdominant or chord four, which is F major, the dominant chord of G major, that's chord five, and then the submediant chord or chord six, or indeed the relative minor of your major key, A minor. So all of those sort of technical terms banded about there. Now, in jazz, which is where the sort of tritone substitution really is, comes into its own, you can actually have a fourth note that assigns, that basically goes with all of these chords. So C major, if I add another note on top, the B, I get C major seven. So chord two would be D minor seven, and then E minor seven, F major 7, G7, and A minor 7. So just going back to the C major 7 here. If I was to take the root and the fifth here and put them down an octave, I get this. So I've now got my C and G, which is root and fifth, in the left hand, leaving only the third and the seventh in the right hand. Now, if I was to do that with the other chords, D minor 7, E minor 7, F major 7, G7, and A minor 7. So they're nicely spread out. So if we have my C major 7 chord, the chances are, if that is chord 1, that chord 5, or the dominant chord, would be the chord that comes before that, so the penultimate chord of your tune. So if I have this something like this, and we've got G and C. It's called a perfect cadence, it just makes sense, it resolves itself. Now, the chord before that chord five is usually a chord two. You might have heard the phrase two, five, one banded about. And actually what it is, is a chord sequence. And in jazz, you find two, five, ones everywhere. So what we've got is a D minor seven. If I just divide the, uh, the work up here, so I've got my root and the fifth in D, my third and the seventh. And then I've got my G seven and my C major seven. The trouble is, it sort of dances around the houses a bit. We don't re really want this. And especially if it's parallel fifths, that kind of goes against the grain of the original Bach theory as well. However, we've got D minor seven, G seven, and C major seven. Now a tritone substitution, that applies to chord five. So we've got chord two already, which is D minor seven, and chord one, which is C major seven. So they're right next to each other. Wouldn't it be nice if we had something that flowed a bit better from chord two to chord one? Well, there is such a thing. And I'm gonna describe what the tritone substitution actually is. So we've got D minor seven, then we've got G seven. Now, what you can do in the bass is to play a tritone away. Now, tritone, that's three tones. One, two, three. So if I move the fifth as well, one, two, three, I end up with this. So we got this. But I can also swap these two over in my G7 chord. I could actually have an F and a B, not B and F. This means you get this. 
So, it's quite fluid, that. You can add extra notes to these chords as well. Essentially, you've got the same sort of thing. But nothing's really changed from my C major there. My chords here still got natural notes in, but I've actually changed the left hand to be that tritone. Now, the only trouble is with the tritone substitution is it's very often overused, properly caned all the time. And you think, oh. and it actually it can upset the uh, the sort of apple cart in terms of the chord sequence. It can make it actually quite disjointed and sort of it wanders off a bit. So we've got to be a bit careful. But tritone substitutions, you can also divide the work. You could go D minor seven, G seven. and actually change the bass note halfway through the bar. So G7, forgot this, is the same as D flat seven. So what's actually happening here, if I play the G7, there's my root in the fifth. I've now got my seventh and third there. If I substitute the bass, my seventh and third have actually swapped over. I've got my third and seventh in the key of D flat or the chord of D flat there. So what I've actually got is D flat and A flat, F, which is the third, and C flat, which is your flat and seventh. It's not a B, a D flat chord or a D flat major scale doesn't have a, a B in, it would be a C flat. So we have G7, which has got F and B, and a D flat seven, which has got F and C flat. So just to be pedantic on that, you have to sort of go with it a bit because actually it, if, if the theory is correct, if it's rigorously correct, it actually ends up making more sense. So what's actually happened then in any, in any dominant seventh chord, if I have a B flat seven, it can become an E seven. If I have an F sharp seven chord, it can become a C seven. B flat seven, E seven. Now, the more notes you add in the right hand, the chances are you're going to have to alter some things. If I have a, for example, an E nine, so there's my E seven. And if I add my F sharp, which is the ninth, it's not actually going to work terribly well with the substitution because we've got an F in the left hand and an F sharp in the right hand. We end up with our minor ninth interval, which is a little bit problematic. So if you do a nine, it's an E nine, and you want to substitute that, you could actually alter one of the notes in your chord to actually make some sense. So there it is, the tritone substitution. It's all about that dominant chord in your two, five, one sequence.